What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are making one of my all-time favorite things, a another cheese board. Today we're going to focus on how to make a really cool cheese board for your Thanksgiving. It's always great to have an appetizer out, especially if you're having maybe a later Thanksgiving dinner. So I'm going to show you how to put together a board that everybody's going to be obsessed with. I don't know why, but for whatever reason, when you make a cheese board, people think that you're a freaking wizard. When in reality, all we did is basically throw a bunch of stuff on a board and made it out, made it look a little bit fancy. If you're new around here, I love cheese boards, so I have tons of cheese board content. I'll link some more videos in the description below if you want to check those out. But for today, we're specifically talking about our holiday cheese board. So we're going to talk about the six essentials that you need in a cheese board, as well as ways that you can substitute out ingredients if you can't find certain things at your grocery store. And finally, because it is for Thanksgiving, we'll talk about transporting your cheese board or how to lay it out to serve to your guests. The very first thing we have to do when we're planning a cheese board is decide all the ingredients that we want on it. Now by all means, if you need to pull together a cheese board very last minute, you can use whatever is in your fridge. But if you want to go a little, I guess, extra and actually put together a list of all your favorite ingredients, here are the six essentials that every cheese board needs. Obviously we're going to need some cheese, so our first ingredient is cheese. Feel free to use different colors, textures, tastes, I usually like to make sure there's a stinky cheese in there to make sure that there's cheese with different textures just to vary things up a little bit. Next, arguably also just as important as cheese is our charcuterie or our meat. There's lots of different options. Meat tends to be a little bit pricier, so choose with whatever you have in your budget. For this board today, we're using dry salami as well as prosciutto. You also want to have something a little bit briny on your board. So I usually use olives or pickles for this. Next up, we also want a little salty moment. So nuts are a great option for this. Then to balance out the salty, we need a little something sweet. So you can use things like fruit, honey, or jam for this. And finally, we can round out the whole cheese board with our base or our crackers. These are things that you can kind of build little mini bites on. So you can use bread, you can use crackers, really whatever you can find. For my Thanksgiving board, which I will link the entire recipe in the description below, we're using a lot of fall produce. I wanted this to feel very fall, festive, Thanksgiving, so we're using fall colors, fall flavors for this board. However, like I mentioned earlier, the great thing about cheese boards is that there's tons of substitutions you can make. If you can't find a certain cheese or you can't find a certain produce item, just use whatever you have available at your grocery store. There are pretty much endless combinations of things that you can put on your cheese and charcuterie boards. I actually have a list that I made of over 100 ideas of food items to include on your board, so I'll link this freebie below. Feel free to sign up and get it sent directly to your email. Okay, so now that we've talked about ingredients, it's time to move on to the fun part is actually building your board. So the first thing that you'll need to do is grab a board. If you want to invest in one, you can get a nice charcuterie board for around $20 to $30, but you can also use whatever you have on hand at home. A serving platter will work, and in a pinch, you can even grab a piece of cardboard, cover it with some parchment paper, and that can also work. I also like to grab a few little bowls, and I use these for placing things like honey or jam or maybe pickles that can run off and get into your cheese and meat. So now that you have all of your tools and equipment ready, it's time to actually build our board. People seem to get intimidated by this, but really just kind of play around, have fun with it, and don't think about it too much. The first thing that we need to do is place all of our cheese down. The cheese is a fun part of your board because you can cut it into a lot of different shapes, sizes, and it kind of gives the board some textural and fun visual elements. Don't forget that you can also add some jam or honey on top of your cheese. This is just going to make it taste extra delicious and make it stand out a little from the other types of cheeses on your board. Okay, the next thing that I usually like to do is focus on my meat and charcuterie part. So this usually tends to take up a lot of space on the board, so that's why I do it after I have my cheese kind of anchored down. Now with the meat, you can have fun, fold it into different shapes, different sizes, I know that there's like the trendy meat salami flour that you make using a wine glass. Feel free to do that. Or you can simply just fold it or kind of place it gently on the side. There's lots of different ways to make this meat feel luxurious and really pretty on your board. 
we are moving along to any of your items that you've put into your little bowls. For my board, I did my jam, olives, and little sweet gherkin pickles in the little bowls. And feel free to just place those around the board in really any open slot that you may have. Next, we have all of our fruit. So for this board, we're using grapes, pomegranate, and a few different dried fruits. You can really put them in any open spot, but for me, I like to kind of put them next to whatever cheese or other moment on the board that you want people to eat it with. It kind of gives a visual hint that these two items go together when you place them on the board next to each other. However, I also am kind of a little crazy about the colors that are next to each other. I don't like to have like two red items together. So feel free to think about that as well when you're placing everything on the board. At this point, the board is definitely getting a little bit full, but don't worry, we only have a couple more things to add. Into the little spots that are left, you can add in your nuts and also your crackers. If for some reason your board doesn't seem big enough to hold your crackers, no worries. You can always place those on the side, kind of with a little plate, and that works out perfectly as well. The building process is really all about having fun, experimenting, see what looks good next to each other. At the end of the day, like I said, people are gonna love this so really don't stress out about what goes next to each other it's all gonna come together to look like a beautiful Thanksgiving cheese board now since we're making this board for the holidays I'm guessing there are some things you have some questions about like first of all can you make this board ahead of time the answer is most definitely yes you can make this a day ahead of time or the morning of Thanksgiving and store it in your fridge until you're ready to eat. Just make sure that you don't add your crackers or your bread to the board because they will become a little bit stale if you add them in the refrigerator. That being said, make sure once the board is all good and you're ready to store it in the fridge that you cover it tightly with plastic wrap. This is just gonna make sure that everything stays nice and fresh for when your guests eat it. Now let's say you are taking this board to a friend or a family member's Thanksgiving and you're wondering how should you transport it? Well, if you can, I would suggest getting a charcuterie board that has an edge around it. This is gonna make sure that nothing falls off. I'd also recommend, like I mentioned earlier, to have little bowls for any of those ingredients that may be liquidy or may drip when you transport them in the car. Once again, we're gonna make sure that this board is wrapped up completely with plastic wrap so nothing falls out or drips and you should be able to easily transport it to wherever you're going. Just make sure since we do have a lot of refrigerated items that it is in a temperature controlled space like a cooler or near ice so that way your food doesn't go bad. Okay, so the last question that I get often is how long can I leave this cheese board out at room temperature? It's totally fine to leave it out for an hour or so while your guests are nibbling and munching on it. But after about two hours, you'll probably want to discard all of the leftovers as they're not going to be safe to eat. Just be smart about this. Don't leave the food out longer than it needs to be. And if you want to take it out, have people munch on it, throw it back in the fridge and take it out later, that should be fine as well. All right, I hope this video inspired you and answered all of your burning questions for how to make a holiday charcuterie board. There are tons more resources on my blog and on YouTube with content around cheese and charcuterie boards. I'll link some of those in the description below, so make sure to check that out. And as always, if you love this content, subscribe because I will always be making cheese boards, so you can count on another video coming soon. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.